Hello guys and welcome back to my coding channel. Today we're gonna look at four different Java programs and those Java programs are going to be very very simple yet very unusual and a bit crazy. And this is, this is because they use Java features that aren't um, seen in your everyday life as a developer. You will not see these programs and th this type of code in your everyday life. However, if you understand how, how it works and uh, you understand the, uh, the mechanisms behind these programs, uh, I think it will really, really deepen your understanding, understanding of Java. And uh, this type of code and these type of problems might come up in a programming interview. If you're interviewing for a Java position at uh, a bit more high-end company, uh, you might get such a question. So let's get into it, guys. All right, guys, this is our first Java program we're going to look at. And we're going to ask ourselves two questions. Question number one, will this compile? Is this valid Java code? And question number two is what kind of output will this program produce if it compiles? Uh, and those questions are good because uh, this is the type of questions an interviewer might ask you in an interview. You might be shown some code and the interviewer will ask you, will this run? And what kind of output will it produce if it runs? So let's take a look. We have a class called crazy1 because this program is a bit crazy. And we have a main method and the only two lines that the main method contains are commented lines, lines that contain only comments. So place your bets, guys. Will this compile and what kind of output will it produce? Will it produce any output at all or will it produce something else? So you can pause the video and think for yourself and uh, then get back. Uh, we're going to run this right now and see what kind of output we'll get. And as you can see, we, we get ABC Hello World. So it seems like this system out print actually runs. So this code actually compiles and runs. And the first time I saw this code, uh, my, my mind was blown away because <laughs> this shouldn't happen. I mean, this is, this is a, comment, a commented line. But as you can see, we have a strange, uh, uh, some strange characters here to the left. And uh, when you think deeply and do some research, you'll realize that this is the Unicode character for new line. And before Java compiles uh, the program, it will, t uh, it will replace your uh, Unicode characters in your code with uh, their actual meaning. So for example, the Java compiler will see this and before it compiles, it will convert this to a new line. So uh, Java compiler will turn our code into something like this before it compiles, because this means a new line in Unicode. So it's something to have in mind. And as I understand it, this is by design by the Java developers, because Java wants to be platform independent, of course, and therefore it should support these Unicode characters. Uh, however, it, I mean, it, I, I'm sure they have uh, good reasons for this, but it, it's still a bit strange because in theory you could embed some, some kind of malicious code in someone's code base, uh, say if they have maybe 20 lines with comments and you just insert a single line with something like this and here you can enter your own malicious code. Uh, so this is the first crazy program, guys, uh, where you have a Unicode character and Unicode characters are interpreted before the actual compilation. So let's look at our next program, crazy2. Uh, so what do you think, guys? Will this compile? We have, we have uh, a class and a main method. We declare a variable j. And then we loop from 0 to 100 and we increment j and store the value in, in j. And then we print out j. So place your bets, guys. Will this, com will this compile and what kind of output will we get? 
Let's run it. And we actually get zero guys. So how can this happen? I mean, we loop from zero to 100 and we increment j and store j in j. <clears throat> and the explanation lies in, in our understanding of this increment uh, incrementation operator, increment operator. And as you know, we have two different types of uh, such operators. We can write like this, or we can write like this. So what do you think, guys? Will this produce a different output? Let's, let's find out. And as you can see, we get a hundred because we switched from from this to this. And uh, so this code tests your understanding of this operator. And if we write it like this with the two pluses after the, uh, the variable, uh, variable name, the Java, will, the Java compiler and Java executor will look at this line and think, okay, I'm going to first assign j to j and then I'm going to increment this j to the right. But I'm only going to increment it after this assignment is done. So what happens is we come into this loop and j is zero and compiler thinks, okay, I'm going to assign the value of zero to j and then I'm going to increment this j to the right. And so what happens is that this j will never get any value except zero because the first time we come here, the compiler will, will set j to zero and then increment this j to the right, which is not this j to the left anymore. And uh, uh, the next time will happen exactly the same thing. However, if we change it to this, uh, the compiler and uh, executor, Java executor, executor will come here and first increment j and then put it in j. And so this is the reason it will work uh, if we put it like this, because the j will be incremented first and then assigned. So that is the different difference, guys. You really have to understand the difference between this and this. And this was the program number two. Crazy program number three. Let's go ahead and look at it. Okay, so this is a bit more code, but we have a final constant here, start with a very large number. And we have a count, which is, uh, which is uh, initialized to zero. And when we loop that, we loop from start to start plus 50 uh, and we will increase count. So what kind of output will we get? Or, and will it even compile? Let's take a look guys. And we get zero. How can this be? We start uh, the loop from the value start this and we loop until start plus 50. So in theory, we should get 50. Count should be 50 because we, we loop 50 steps here. However, this comes to the fact that we have a float here, f. Let's, let's see what happens if I change this to an int. And we get 50. So the reason why this happens and why this loop never actually gets executed, we never, we never get inside the loop. This is because when we have such a large number uh, as start and when we cast this int to a float, what happens here is that, that when we compare f to start plus 50, which will be this huge number plus 50 like this, uh, float will actually not contain the exact value. Flo float will be rounded, rounded to, uh, to, to this int value. And this means that when we come here, uh, those 
we will have uh, a condition like this. When we add 50 to start, we'll get this number. And uh, f, our float variable, will be this number. However, because float is not really exact, the float will not contain the exact value when we work with such huge uh, integer numbers. When we have a variable that is float, it will not be exact. And so we will actually get that this number is equals this number because they both are huge and they are very close to each other. They only, they only differ by 50. And when we have a float variable, it will not see any difference between these two numbers. It will think that they are equal because float is not really exact when it comes to such uh, enormous numbers. And that is the reason why we never execute this, um, the code inside the loop because the Java will come here and uh, this will not be true because f is not less than start plus 50. It's actually equal to start plus 50 because f is not an exact value. And the compiler and Java will not see any difference between f and start. This is the crazy program number three, guys. Let's take at the crazy program number four, the last one. All right, we have a class and we have a static method in the class that prints greetings. And then we have a null variable that we cast to our class and we call the greet uh, method. So guys, will this compile? Yes or no? And what kind of output will we get? Let's take a look. As you can see, we get greetings as output. How can this be? How, how does this even compile? We have null and then we cast null to a type, uh, crazy4, which is our class, class name. Uh, and so in Java, you can actually cast null to other objects. This is perfectly valid. And uh, because we have a static method in crazy4, uh, it actually uh, executes because uh, when we when we create uh, an object like this with the, a null object that we then cast to crazy4, uh, we don't actually need the object itself because we execute a static method. And a static method, as you remember, is not uh, uh, bound to an object. It's it's uh, it it lives inside the the class, the class definition, not inside per particular objects. And so uh, Java doesn't care that this is null it, because it doesn't even use it. It uses this static method and uh, those are not uh, bound to specific uh, instances of a class. So that is why this null uh, variable uh, uh, why this code is uh, working because we cast null to crazy4 perfectly fine and then we call a static method on this null crazy4 variable and this is also perfectly fine because a static method isn't uh, bound to an instance so this instance can in fact be null so that's it guys those are, are the four crazy java programs uh, that i wanted to share with you and I hope you got a bit more understanding of uh, Java as a programming language because you never really see this type of code in your everyday life. However, as I said in the beginning, I think it's extremely important to understand how, how uh, these programs actually work and why they produce the output they actually produce. It really tests your knowledge of Java. So that's, that's it for today, guys. I hope you have a nice day and I see you tomorrow.